Hey everybody, it's Zach. Welcome back to the Heroverse. And guys, I just got done with All American uh, Season 5, Episode 18, called This Is How You Do It, guys. What a phenomenal episode. I mean, we're really like, things are really getting intense and things are really building up. As we are getting to our finale. Like I said, this was episode 18. We only have two more episodes left of the season. And like I said, you guys know my take on this season. That, you know, I, I liked the season in the beginning. That I started to be like, okay, this I feel like the show is kind of, you know, falling, you know, to, you know, kind of, you know, falling into the CW curse. But ever since, you know, the whole killing Billy off the show thing, you know, Ark, this show has been nothing but nothing but like keeping me interested you know what i mean in in the show and 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 really kind of being in and really being invested in the show i feel like that goes for everybody that ever since they did that and it was kind of like they, like they kind of blindsided us by that this show has been nothing but like oh my god like what's gonna happen next so this show like this episode i was not expecting to be this good i mean from the promo i was always i was interested to see what was going on between coop and professor hill because you know ever since you know you know professor hill kind of realized you know me i should never judge a book by its cover and kind of got close to coop i thought everything was all good but then started you know in last week's episode pretty much you know was getting on coop for her her slang and wanted her to like you know use correct you know you know correct you know term term you know i, I forget the word for it like like speak in a, a different way and not you know you not talk the way she usually talks that's when i've kind of been like okay like you know what the hell's been going on with the teacher and you know for this episode i was kind of like okay this is supposed to be uh, a team building episode because you know the gau team is kind of like like they kind of you know hit uh some hit some growing pains um a part of the football team they kind of like you know are starting to fall apart they were working together as a unit, and then out of nowhere, they started to kind of, you know, disagreeing on things, and kind of like the football team's falling apart. My, my biggest reason I did not really, like, initially did not care about this episode from the promo was kind of, like, I was, because I was kind of like, this doesn't really make much sense because the team has been working great, and out of nowhere, they're not working great anymore. I was kind of like, if you, if anything, they should have done this in the beginning, when you, when, when they, when, when Spencer and, you know, kind of, and Jordan kind of brought on you know, uh, the, the new members of the team, uh, which is, uh, which is, uh, what is it, uh, Kai and, and, uh, Kai and, and Sal, when you brought them in, then that's when the team should have, you know, started to kind of like, you know, falter, not like, oh, when they were brought in, everything was okay. And out of nowhere, the team is faltering. So that's why I was kind of like, I'm not really down for this episode. Like, I feel like it's too late. Um, I feel like this is kind of out of nowhere. So I was kind of like, okay, this is going to be like, okay episode. I was kind of like, okay, whatever, but no. This episode was peak. This was a great episode, and I'm so glad it was because, like I said, initially when I went into this episode, I was like, I really don't care about this episode. It feels like too late in the game to kind of like give this football team, like, you know, a team, team kind of teamwork like problems. I was like, it's a little late because they've been like, they've been hitting, hitting it off. I mean, hell, they, they got, um, you know, they got, you know, uh, Marco Galvez in, in, in the last episode. Um, the team was working great then and out of nowhere like the team is kind of like faltering in their teamwork so i was like okay like I i'm not buying into it but like i said this episode was just peak i mean we start off and the they, they did so many things in this episode that i was not prepared for and i was like damn this episode actually is like straight up peak and they're not messing around for these last couple of episodes they're really trying to tie things up neatly from what i'm seeing to end the season off in a great way where we're not like okay like they didn't you know they didn't um they didn't wrap, they didn't, you know, uh, tie, the, tie that arc up. They didn't, they didn't, you know, finish this arc up. You know what I mean? It, like, it's like they're trying to finish these arcs up before going into season six, before they kind of like, you know, go on break until we get season six. So I was very impressed. And for, to, to start off this episode, we had Jamie and we had Asher finally telling the, the, the Vortex that they're having a baby. And I was super excited, super happy about this. I was like, okay, we're finally telling them that, you know, that they're having a baby. I was like, I'm glad that, you know, they're, they're finally going to tell them that they're, they're having a baby. The thing I loved the most was, is that it was, it was, uh, it was Coop, it was Layla, it was Olivia that were, that were in the beach house when Jamie came in to go tell them that, you know, they're have Asher and her having a baby. And of course for Asher, he, Asher came into the beach house, um, to tell, uh, to tell uh, Jordan and to tell Spencer that they're having a baby because the only one that knows from Asher's 
friend group really of, of all the, the dudes that are in the beach house is JJ and JJ was supposed to keep that secret but we end up finding out that JJ ends up telling them that he is having a baby with Jamie he kind of just let it spill out and I was kind of like damn like they knew that that entire time and they wanted to wait because I could really tell like they were like oh like oh what are you trying to what, why'd you bring us here or why do you want what do you, what do you want to tell us and I instantly knew okay they know clearly and even Asher knew you know you know JJ told you didn't he he's like oh but we wanted to hear you say it so it was just really nice that they were very supportive the vortex group that they were very happy for jamie and the, at the baker house and they were happy for you know asher at the beach house i was very happy that they were very supportive the thing i did not know in this episode is that jamie's sister casey or cassie i can't remember i think i want to say it's cassie not casey i i can't quite remember but asher walked up in the in in uh in the beach house and wrapped his arms around, you know, this girl. And instantly I thought, oh no, that's, that's, you know, that's Jamie, right? Mind you, I feel like it's been a minute since I've seen Jamie. So I kind of forgot that she had long hair. And then when the girl turns around, it ends up not being Jamie. It ends up being Jamie's sister, uh, you know, uh, Cassie. And I kid you not, I said, holy shit, bro, you're in deep shit. <laughs> I was like, how did you not know? How did you not remember that your girlfriend has long hair? And doesn't have short hair, man. I was like, oh my god. When Jamie finds out, Jamie's gonna be so pissed. Because literally, he said, oh, what's up, babe? You know what I mean? And and wrapped his arms around her. And I was like, oh, bro. I was like, you're about to be in the doghouse for that. Like, how did you forget her hair length, my guy? So, weirdly enough, that was kind of in a weird start. Kind of like, you know, to Jamie to introduce her little sister or older or her older sister, little sister. I'm not quite sure. I think it's her little sister if I'm correct, to Asher about them having a baby and stuff. And I guess she already knows that they're, they're having a baby, but she does not. Already, Asher is in rocky territory with her even before he thought that, you know, Cassie was Jamie because, you know, in, in, in Cassie's words, she thinks Asher is not responsible enough to kind of have a baby with, you know, uh, you know her, her sister. And also thinks that they're too young to have a baby. And also, we end up finding out the, 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 the deep points of the big, biggest reason why she has a problem with Asher is because she thinks that Asher signed off on Jamie not taking her medication for lupus anymore. When it's like, Asher's like, I didn't sign off on that. And, you know, what were you talking about, essentially? And I kind of, from what I gathered, when it's like, because he even found out from Casey, because, you know, because Casey made it sound like that, you know, from, from, I uh, was it, uh, from Jamie, that Jamie would, like, that Asher was okay with that. And Asher knew when in reality, when, when, when Cassie was talking to Asher about it, Asher was like, what do you mean? That's really dangerous for her to do that. I would never agree with that. And then she kind of realized, okay, like you're not as bad as bad as a guy as I as I thought you were. And do you know what I mean? And it's like he was in shock, and he was kind of like, and she took that to the point of like, oh, since Jamie didn't tell you, you clearly aren't ready to have a kid if she wouldn't even tell you about that. When it made Asher look bad because Jamie lied, making it sound like Asher was a part of kind of like her not, you know, her not taking her meds anymore. Um, when in reality, he's like, he, but even though in, in all seriousness is that they are, they are a unit now. It's not that, you know, it's not the fact of just when you're in a relationship, it's like in reality, it's like, that's a big decision. But I understand that that was her decision with her doctor and that's what she and her doctor thought was best. But I can understand Asher's point of view saying like, we're a team, you know, this, this like, how could you think this won't, how could you think that I would agree with this? And why wouldn't she tell me this when we're like, you know, she's not on her own anymore and we're a team and we're having a baby. I understood where he was coming from, but I also agreed with her point on like that she gets to make her own decisions, but I didn't agree with the fact that she kind of, you know, told her sister that Asher was okay with that. That was a little bit of bullshit. I was like, okay, you can make your own decisions. That's fine. But you lying and making it sound like Asher is agreeing with what you're doing is fucked. I was like, I don't agree with that. I cannot lie though. Jamie's sister is fine as hell. When I saw her, I was like, holy shit. I was like, my, you know, I was like, damn. I was like, gorgeousness runs in that family. I was like, holy, holy shit. So I was like, wow. But, you know, I just, that was, I, I, I was not rolling with Casey or Cassie. Like I said, I can't remember her name. Um, but, you know, I, she kind of came around towards the end. And I was like, okay, okay. Because, you know, Asher, you know, it was really nice because Jordan and Layla kind of made Asher, you know, realize that that is what the fact that he, the fact that, you know, he is worried about Jamie. That's one of the reasons that, you know, he loves Jamie is because Jamie isn't afraid to take, isn't afraid to live life. And that's one of the things where she's like, you know, that's her living life. And that's what makes 
Asher, you know, that's the one part that, that's the big thing that made Asher fall in love with Jamie is that she's not afraid to, you know, live life. And that, in her, in that standpoint of her realizing, like, this is what I want to do, I want to stop taking my meds, is her living that life that, uh, and that, and that's what made him fall in love with her. And that was just some brilliant, like, advice from Jordan and Layla. They, they are couple goals. Like, that's some great advice from both of their behalfs in this episode. So I was very proud of them to give Asher that good advice. Be like, don't be mad that they're, they're this is, like, you should, in a way that, you know, you should, you know, even though you're upset, the fact that you're worried about that, but that's the, that's the reason why you love her is that she's not afraid to take risks to live life. You know what I mean? She, she lives her life to the fullest. That's why you, that's one of the reasons why you fell in love with her. Don't forget that. And he's like, I won't. And, you know, he actually asked Jamie to move in with them, and she ends up moving into the beach house, and her sister ends up helping her move in, which really made me happy that, you know, it wasn't that they got on bad terms or anything, and they kind of, because, you know, like, oh, he did when you said, like, why would you lie to your sister, making it, like, saying that I, I, I agreed on you not taking your meds, you know what I mean, like that. So I'm glad that they kind of didn't, like, drag that out. I'm glad that, you know, they worked together as a unit, and Jordan was able to help you know, Asher see from Jamie's perspective of what it's like to, you know, to go through lupus and have to take that medication, how hard it must have been to, to make that decision and why she kept that from him because she was afraid that he was going to act the way he acted, but it's all out of fear of losing Jamie when in reality she gets to decide how, you know, the life and the risk that she wants to take to live life to the fullest. So it's like you need to see from her perspective that she's the one going through that. And I, enjoyed, I just loved it. I thought it was brilliant that Jordan and Layla just came in the clutch. I was just very happy with that. Um, but the biggest thing about also what's going on on the Spencer and on the Jordan's perspective with the, oh, what's going on with the team, Jordan really wasn't involved on really what, like about, about the hardships of the team not really working together because Jordan ends up getting sick in this episode. And already I thought he was kind of being over dramatic, but it turns out that the flu is going around GAU and, you know, I, and I realized then, oh shit, like he's not really, I feel like, I feel like he still was over dramatic as fuck, but the fact that Layla was able to put up with his, his drama in this just, it just shows that they are perfect for each other, that she's able to put up with that. And that's just cup. That's just a wife right there. You know what I mean? There's someone that's able to put up with Jordan's like, oh my God, like this is so tough for me. Making it sound like he has like, you know, and Layla's, you know, and Layla's, uh, you know, words having um ebola you know what i mean she's like you're making it sound like you're you're making it you have a cool not ebola you know you're acting over dramatic so you know i just really love that she was able to put up with that and able to like get him soup and kind of you know be there for him and, and like and that's just that's not even just being a great girlfriend that's wife material right there and i just feel like they're so perfect for each other it's i'm just so glad that you know we have them together in the show. I'm glad that everything, all the drama led to them being together and they, and literally Layla found her perfect match and Jordan found his perfect match. It's great. And the advice that they gave was couple goals and Jordan called that out. So Jordan really is just like, not really like involved in fixing the problems that are going on with GAU and the new recruits of, of Kai, of, of I think it's Sal and, and yeah, Sal and, 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 and Kai. Yeah, Sal and Kai, if I'm correct, that's his name. Um, so the thing I really hated the most was Kevin. That dude was such a dickhead in this episode. And I, I mean, I had a problem with him before when he was grittying, even though, he, and he couldn't catch shit. And, you know, he didn't like the fact that, you know, Spencer was getting on him about, or Jordan was getting on him about the fact that, why are you celebrating? You didn't catch anything. What are you doing? And I, I hated that episode, and I hated the fact that, like, oh, they brought back the whole dance competition to, like, to cater to that dude's grittying. When he grittied again, and they apparently have not been working together as a unit the whole entire team ever since the new recruits came in, they have apparently have been not on the same page for weeks. And I thought to myself, how is this dude grittying right now? What is this dude? What's with him grittying all the time? I don't find that amusing. That shit's annoying. That, that character, that Kevin character... I was like, wow, this show is really making it hard for me to like this dude because he is giving everybody problems in the locker room when he get, he got on, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, about Olivia, you know, them finding out that Olivia is the one that wrote the wrote the article with the whole Olivia kind of, you know, going to get the award and saying that I made the thing Spencer, uh, J uh, J uh, was it, uh, Jaden Davis, you know what I mean? But now I want to come forward, you know what I mean? Like they found out that Olivia was the one that wrote the article, so now he's getting on everybody's case saying, oh, don't say or whatever, you know, about, because I guess he said, he, he said GAU, but he said like JAU or something, or he said something, he had like a rude remark 
about like you know uh, our LSU for like losers or whatever. Like he said some dumb shit because they the that they hired has beens in his words, and that's why he's blaming them for the team not working. When it's like no dude, you keep gritting and you keep being an ass isn't helping this team. You're supposed to be all working together, but he was the biggest problem out of the episode. And he got on, like I said, he got on Jordan for you know uh, about Olivia, you know, finding them finding out that Olivia was the one that one that wrote the article and you know had the fake you know name in front of the article. Got on J- Spencer for leaving, abandoning them, and Spencer, you know, literally said, you know, you better watch your mouth. But then when he said, oh, you left us, then Spencer kind of like, you know, stepped back. And in reality, I saw I understand why Spencer stepped back because he was about to crack this fool. But I hated that Kenny got angry at Spencer for backing down about the fact of, you know what I mean? Like he was saying some rude stuff, you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't know why you backed down because you lost a lot of respect in the locker room once he said that, oh, you abandoned us. So like, what do you like, you know what I mean? And, and that's what, and, and everybody's seeing that, oh, that's the reason why Spencer's backing down because he is, you know, still holding on the fact that he abandoned the team and Kenny was worried about how that was going to make Spencer look to the team when he when Kenny is relying on Spencer to be a leader, but I keep thinking to myself, that's not Spencer's job to fix what's really going on with the team. You're the coach. I was like, I'm really confused right now. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, Spencer did the right thing for backing up because he was about to sock that fool and it made things worse. He took the high ground. That that Kevin dude needs to be kicked off the team. Dude's annoying as hell. I mean, his excuses that he's like, oh, you know, we've been, I've been here for the past three years, all, all throughout the, you know, the hardships of, you know. I was finding uh, about, you know, your sister, you know, Olivia, like writing the article and, and pretty much, you know, you know, eliminated us for, uh, for the, uh, for the bowl, um, you know, for a one, for the one year, uh, eliminated us for the bowl for one year. And you know what I mean? It's like, I have no other place to go. And then you abandon us for a little bit. So I understand they was angry about all the hardships that happened, but you know, it's like, dude, you're not helping your case because you are ruining the team on you on you grasping that you all need to work together that you're all there for a reason he was the biggest issue of this episode and that kevin dude man when they came that gritty and when he grittied again and he was being a problem again i'm like this character needs to go i'm like i'm not rocking with this character even though you know he, he accepted olivia's apology at the end of the episode and kind of saw from the perspective of spencer saying like you know, we all need to be working together you know what I mean? It's like you, I understand your, where you're coming from and that, you know, you've been here for three years. This is all you have, but this is all we all have. Like we all want to make this team greater and you're not helping that by you not accepting our new, our new players. So I was glad that like, you know, that dude finally got on the right page, but that shit was hella annoying. But the great, the, Spencer had a great idea and it was through Olivia on Olivia's, you know, arc in this episode about her going to GAU and kind of wanting to, like, throw herself back into college again. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm really loving the headspace that, like, Olivia really made a great bounce back after Billy's death and her wanting to go back to college and her finding that BSU, or, yeah, I think, it, I think it was called BSU, if I'm correct. I'm, I just want to make sure. Um, yeah, that BSU kind of club. And they're having, uh, you know, uh, fashion, like, they're having a fashion show at, B, at like, a BSU fashion show. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, I, I, I think her name was Davida. Davida ha- went, got short-staffed because of people having, you know, the flu. So, you know, she got short-staffed. And then, you know, you know, Olivia kind of, you know, said, I can help you. Because Olivia got turned away from this other, I think it was like a sorority or other, like, you know, uh, our club that, you know, was was uh, led by this Blair girl. And even Davida said that Blair girl, don't like don't even pay attention to her. She's sus. I was like, you're 100% right. She's sus because she got on Olivia when Olivia was writing down her name on, on the paper saying like, oh, you're the one that wrote that article and you made it, you made problems for my boyfriend on the football team and was just being all snippy and, and just a jerk about it when it's like Olivia needed to write that article because she didn't want to hurt the ba- football team. She wanted to get Garrett out because Garrett was hurting the football team. But that girl clearly didn't, she was being, wanting to be a jerk. And I'm just so glad that, you know, Olivia found Davida and, you know, and it was, and, and, and what, a, and had a great timing too. Like I said, like it was perfect for Olivia to come in, throw herself back into GAU again, because she found a club at BSU and was able to kind of like do her first like project at, at BSU. Her, you know what I mean? And uh, it, with a great, and it was a great project too. You know what I mean? So it was like, it, it was showing off the African culture of clothing at this, uh, uh, and it was a, a fashion show. Like I thought it was f- freaking phenomenal. I was like, what? How better can this get? So the fact that you know Olivia's on this you know comeback arc, I, it makes me very happy for the character. 
and you know and that it worked in the benefit of that you know even the for the dance side of the fashion show of the of the of the the dude side that's when uh, you know uh spencer's like i'll take you up on that offer you know we can help each other you know what I mean you can you know what I mean I like you need the you need guys for the for the guys fashion line for the BSU fashion show um for the dance number and I need to have my team work together and this would be a perfect opportunity let's work together but also this brought Spencer and Olivia closer together and Olivia has been is, is such in a great headspace and Spencer's getting back to being in a good headspace where this is just so pure that, you know, it's like how they fell in love. You know what I mean? That them being friends, coming back together, and then, like, they're, they're, they're like, they're, and it's, like, rebuilding their love and them getting back to that relationship. And I'm seeing that. And I thought it was so brilliant that they're helping each other, but also they're helping each other, you know, get back to the point that they were at once before of being in that relationship, you know what I mean, that we've, we all love. So seeing that, I thought that was really beautiful. And seeing that dance number, I was not expecting that Olivia and Spencer to have that dance number, and you could really see the, the you could really see the love. I mean, the, literally, like sparks was flying off them. I was like, oh my god, their chemistry is phenomenal. I just want to say shout out to Daniel Ezra and shout out to uh, Samantha Logan because they kill it uh, with this kind of you know uh, the way they they pull off this love for each other in the show. And that, you know, and that they are meant for each other vibes in the show. They just, they, they pull it off beautifully in the longing that you could feel in the, in, in the, in the dance number of them like longing for each other and wanting to be with each other and him chasing after her when she was walking away. And Jesus, the outfit that Olivia was wearing in this episode was my, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, damn. And even like, and even Olivia brought in. I can't remember her name. Uh, Kia brought in Kia to help out too, and and even like you know, uh, Kia said to Spencer, you know what I mean? That like, you know, you know what you know, like I like that's the reason why you know you 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 did this. You know what I mean? And and he looks at Olivia, and even he's like, oh my god, like you look absolutely beautiful, stunning, like a whole bunch of words you could just imagine it was popping to his head like i love you like he had that probably pop in his head like you can even tell he's like you know he was he, he's he loves olivia and it was real sad factors is that alicia was really supporting spencer in this episode kind of like oh you could like you know you know you you can find a way to bring the team together because you are the leader and he's like why does everybody look at me like a leader i'm just a normal guy it's like no she's like no spencer you are a leader and I really felt bad because even in that dance number, when I found out that Olivia was actually dancing with Spencer, I was like, oh shit, Alicia sitting out in the audience. I feel so bad for that girl. And it comes down to the fact that like, Alicia didn't deserve this. And us as viewers, like the writers put her in as a roadblock. And even, even in real life with Spencer Pacinger, he had roadblocks before he got to, you know, you know, to, with, with the, whether I, I can't remember he, like the person, he, like, cause again, this is based on a true story of Spencer pacing or I don't know if like the girl he ends up getting with is actually, her name is Olivia, but he, the, the, or his version of Olivia, there was roadblocks there. So it kind of like, it upsets me because it's like, I feel so bad for the character Alicia and I don't want to hate that character. You know what I mean? It's like, it's one of those things where I don't want to be like, Oh, you're in the way, get out of the way. But the, they're writing her like that because that's what Spencer pacing in real life had obstacles before he got to his Olivia. So it's like it needs to happen. But I felt so bad for Alicia that she could even see that they are they're in love with each other. And she's like, you know, I'm glad that you know, even Spencer, after he was done, you know, was going right, getting ready to tell Alicia, like, yo, look, like, I just realized I'm not over, you know, Olivia and we I can't do this anymore. But he, she saw that. He didn't even need to say it. She saw that in their dance, that they love each other, and there's still that passion there, and still that, you know, that drive for both of them to want to get back to one another. So, like, it was really sad, but it needed to be done. She's like, you know, I'm glad that, you know, like, she's like, I can admit to my faults of me staying, but, you know, I, and I'm glad that you can admit to it finally, too, you know what I mean? That you can admit to, like, what you, like, I deserved better, and I'm glad that you can, like, you will, you will admit that, you know, I'm not just, you know, in denial about this, that you still have any feelings for Olivia. I'm glad that you can admit that. But she does deserve better Alicia. She deserves someone that's fully committed to her and has no eyes for any other woman. Like, she does definitely deserve that. So, kudos to her. I don't think we're going to be seeing that character again, probably at all, which is very, which is upsetting. But I mean, the, the that character, she they had its had her purpose 
for you know the, the arc of Olivia and Spencer getting back together. So you I mean it's kind of like it makes sense that she would just be written off at this point, which is upsetting, but makes sense. Um, but also, you know, what's going on with uh, with Coop, Sky, and the whole record uh, Miko recording Sky kissing patients. And, the, and I was seeing the video saying, you know, recorded, or it said, like, file uploaded, or it said something like that. I can't remember what the phone said. But I was worried about the tube when she put, like, patients put their phone up. I was like, oh, shit. This, like, it, I, 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 you know what's crazy? I thought to myself, is, is like, Miko going to, going to, like, like, uh, blackmail patients. You know what I mean? About, oh, like, if you don't, like do what I tell you to do, I'm going to tell Coop, and Coop's never going to forgive you, or blah, 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 I'm going to make your life a living hell, blah, 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 but no, she actually, Minko actually blacksmails Sky in this episode, which I was like, this came, that came out of the right field, I was like, I was not expecting, you, Minko would try to blackmail Sky. did not expect that, did not expect that, but I was like, holy shit, so, <laughs> I felt so bad, because Sky clearly is like, feels super guilty as she should because she should never have like i mean in 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 the standpoint you said you were on a break coop never said that and if you loved coop so much much you would never have kissed patients so in reality you should feel bad but no one should get blackmailed like that i felt really bad so the moment where like sky is really trying to be there for coop and coop actually tells sky that you know she loves her that was really tough i was like god damn i was like this i feel really bad for sky because she's like she even realized that she made a mistake I don't know if she really realized that if, if she wasn't blackmailed because you could really tell like now I feel like, but then again, I could tell when she made that cause she kind of felt bad about it. But even now she's like, you could tell that she feels super guilty. And I just, I felt bad. I was like, you should, but like, I feel bad that someone's blackmailing you. I, I felt really bad. But the thing that really pissed me off the most was, uh, professor Hill, professor Hill Coop's teacher is an ass. He is flat out racist. Like, at this point, I, I definitely feel like he's flat out racist because of the fact of him getting on Coop um, for, again, the way Coop is speaking and saying, oh, Coop, you look, uh, you know, you look, uh, you know, uh, like you're, you look like a, a, I forget what he said, like, oh, you're, uh, you, you're slouching or whatever, you know, you know, stand up straight, you look, uh, I, like he said, oh, you look like uh, not put together, you look, uh, you know, he said some shit like that when Coop literally like what Coop said is like I how could you how could he say I look like a mess when I look like you know uh uh what is it what do you say uh you know Lawrence Fishburne that you know they mean or like that came out the Matrix or whatever like that he said some shit like you know Coop said some shit like that and I was like you know you you make a good point like Coop looks amazing and the fact that he was getting on Coop uh because you know like calling out like critiques about Coop like oh don't don't say it like that you know what I mean you know get rid of your slang and oh you know, stop slouching, you look like a slob, that's what he said, or something like that, he's just acting outright racist, I was like, he's not doing that to anybody else, and he wants to change Coop into someone that Coop isn't, and it's like, I thought you got past that, I thought you realized what you did was wrong the first time you met Coop, but like, I, I don't know what this teacher's problem is, honestly, and even Sky is like, he's being racist, like, what, like, what, what's going on here, and Sky even wants to look into, like, being like, okay, like, the teacher can't do this to you, and even when, you know, Coop, you know, confronted, uh, Professor Hill about it, you know, we thought he understood, but no, like, you know, uh, I forget, like, uh, he told Coop to go sit down and brought someone else up instead, when Coop was giving her our closing statement or whatever, and said like, "Oh, like you didn't want me getting, you, you didn't want to get special treatment, or oh, you were getting, uh, you were doing whatever, but like, you know, I, I, I picked somebody else. Like, oh, you were doing something, so I picked somebody else. I mean, pretty much, you know, trying to like get payback on her for her saying, can, can you please not, you know, pick on me and please stop, you know, trying to critique me? Could you stop doing that? You know what I mean? Like, just stop. And he, and he took." a weird route of wanting to get payback when teachers in general that teachers that do that I find are really weird and it's like you're supposed to help people and guide people and not try to change people because of where they came from it just it just disgusts me and it makes me angry and I don't understand what the hell is going on with Professor Hill because like I said this was a total 180 from like when when we like when we thought you know he realized what he did was wrong with judging a book by its cover but with Coop and then was cool with Coop and out of nowhere took a 180 and saying oh it's Coop don't talk don't use your slang oh sit up straight you're looking like a slob blah 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 
and then and then trying to get revenge on Coop for Coop like having a civil conversation, like please don't critique me, don't give me special treatment. I mean, like what, what the hell is going on here? And was just say, oh, go, just go sit down. I pick somebody else. I don't know what the dude's problem is, other than the fact that I'm seeing racist flags on dude at this point. I'm like, nah, bro, you gotta go. I'm honestly hoping that even though stuff's going on, because actually Coop ends up getting the same text of the of the video. So I guess, you know, Miko said, uh, I'm not liking the fact that she's not, you know, listening to me and send it to Coop. Or maybe she was going to do that anyways to make like drama because it makes, I will talk about that in a minute. But, you know, Coop pretty much, you know, says that, you know, I can't even trust you. I mean, I really tried and then shows, you know, Sky the video. And that really makes it to the point where I don't know if they're going to get back together. It's going to be very interesting. I, I, I could see them waiting to save that if they're going to get back together until next season. I don't know. It just really sucks that kind of, you know, Miko threw this wrench in there when I feel like I, I want to give Sky the benefit of the doubt. I want to be like, I think she would have came clean about the mistake that she made if it wasn't for Miko blackmailing her. I want to think that, but I'm not sure. That's the thing. I, I don't know if she would have. But, you know, I feel like she was leading up to doing that. But it was already too late with Miko showing, you know, sending the video to Coop. Um, so I don't know. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like still Sky will look into the, the teacher kind of, you know, taking revenge and, 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 and being racist to Coop. I, I hope that Sky still looks into that because it will show also Coop that, you know, even though I even like, I know I made a mistake, but I still care about you and I want to help you with the problem that you're dealing with in class. You know what I mean? I wouldn't still think that. So I hope that they, we can get this addressed because this teacher has got to go. Like he's, he's really pissing me off. I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell. Like, even even her class, even her group, her group that he wanted her to be in is, like, totally against what he is doing. And even sees that, like, what are you doing? Like, it was Coop's turn. Why are you bringing me up here? Like, no, she can do the closing statement. I don't want to do it. And he's like, no, you do it instead. Coop, go sit down. You know what I mean? Because he didn't like the way Coop was talking. When Coop looked amazing, she wasn't sl slouching, and Coop... That's the, that's the way Coop talks. You don't have to talk all like hoity toity to get a point across, because she made a great point that you know didn't you ever think that there's people like me that are going to be out in the you know out, that are going to be in like in the you know uh, they're going to be there's a word jurors or whatever like don't you ever don't you ever think about that are people like me that are going to be in the courtroom you know what I mean it's like I'm not going to let you change me but he didn't like the sound of that so he wanted to get revenge and be weird about it. I hate people like that. That's the, that's people like that are what's wrong with the world. You know what I mean? That can never accept people for who they are and where they came from. It, it really upsets me. So, other than that, you know, I really you know loved this episode. I feel like I really hit all the notes. I can't recall. We and we didn't see Laura in this episode. We didn't see Patience in this episode. We didn't see uh, JJ in this episode, which I'm still pissed that they're kind of been like I was pissed. That they were kind of holding off on like what's going on with JJ. I was like, okay, because I, I even said like it really makes me annoyed that we had an episode with JJ almost dying and him confronting the you know to Asher like I want to leave like I, I don't want I'm gonna leave football I want to leave like the school like I, I want to leave I need to leave everything and even leave my friends I got cons I was like bro like how are we not addressing this in the next episode and mind you Asher Asher was even in the next episode after the episode that we that we did have which wasn't last week but it was the week weeks episode before that where like yo jj came clean about everything and all that stuff and kind of was like at a breaking point but i'm super excited to watch the, the promo because what i am talking about is what we are going to be addressing with jj in next week's episode which i did not put the promo up which also i want to say real quick layla did get sick mind you layla like jordan was being over dramatic and he wanted layla to get these vitamin c like gummy bears with stickers in it he, she didn't do it, and even I thought it was ridiculous. Like, dude, she's like, dude, you're in your like, you're you're like 19 or you're you're you're, you're 19, and you and and you want like a kid's, you know what I mean? Like, no, like take this uh, take this cough medicine or take whatever. I forget what she gave him. Um, and he's like, I don't want to take that. But it was really cute when and even she like he said like he didn't want to kiss her because he was sick, and she's like, oh, I could survive a little cold. You know what I mean like you know, give me a kiss. And she ends up getting sick, and it was really cute because he got the gummy bears with a sticker, and he put them on her like the little heart shaped stickers on her on her cheeks. I thought that was really cute. I, that was I was like, damn, like that's adorable. I want to have that like with my girlfriend when I have a girlfriend. I've been been single for a very long time. I don't know if anybody knows this, but I was in it years ago. I'm gonna say it was probably like back in like I haven't dated probably since like 20, 2016. I think so. 
2016, I haven't dated because I had a terrible, terrible relationship where my girlfriend cheated on me. And do you know what I mean? It, it broke me to the point where, like, I mind you, I thought me and this girl were like soulmates, and it broke me to the point where I never bounced back. And it just, and I mean, seeing that like there, just I still have goals. You know what I mean? I still, you know, I'm a, still I'm a romantic at heart. So when I see some cute stuff like that, I'm like, damn, like I, I want that so bad. And I feel like I would be like a, jo- a Jordy. You know what I mean? Like a romantic like that. You know what I mean? Like play the hearts. I, I would do that. I used to do shit like that. You know what I mean? Like I used to do like cute things like that. And I, and I you know what I mean? It just I crave to be like you know to to ha- like to be in a relationship like that. You know what I mean? I feel like we all could relate on that. You know, when you see a cute relationship, you're like, damn, I want that. I, I want it. Um, I'm still waiting to find my, you know, my uh, my Olivia or my Layla. I'm still waiting to find, you know, someone someone that, you know, you know, that, you know, will be there for me and kind of, you know, and kind of do what we're seeing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of, I got, you know what I mean? I'm waiting for it. So, it's just, it was one of those cute things. I was like, oh, damn, that's so cute. I was like, <laughs> how cute is that? I was like, oh, wow. But, uh, we're, like I said, we're going to watch the promo. I did not... I uh, have it preset. I wanted to have it preset. I didn't even preset it. So we're, that's actually what we're going to have to do now. I'm on Canva. I want to get out of Canva. Okay. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Real quick. YouTube. I think we are. I'm going to actually make sure too that we're actually good on the sound. Because I do not want it like blasting. So I'm actually going to turn it like down to like. Uh, what's it on? Like probably. I think right there should be good. Hopefully it won't be too loud. I think it should be fine right there, probably. Um, but we'll figure it out in a minute. Because I have different settings when I do my Patreon stuff than when I do it on here, where it'd be too loud. So I just want to make sure it's good. Episode yes, All American Season Five like promo Season Five Episode Nineteen promo. Which again, like guys, like I said, it's weird that we only have this episode. One more episode left, and the season's done. It's very weird. Um, but hopefully, like I said, it's good. I'm actually gonna turn it down to like I think I'm gonna turn this down to like. 60 i think 50 will be good i think but if i need to i'll t- I'll, I'll try to turn it up um but yeah i think I, I think we should be good here uh so let's get into actually i'm gonna what's it what is this did i turn it up no I did. Uh, we're gonna turn it up all the way and we're gonna go right about now hey man have you heard from jj it's been a month i think it's time we do a mental health check you can padres he's in a free fall i don't need your help growth is possible if you come near patients again, you will be arrested. Yeah. Like I said, uh, Layla is not messing around. I'm glad because that, that Miko girl got to go because I'm glad that they kind of have an idea of like, okay, someone hacked her phone. It must be, you know, you know, Miko. The girl's got to go ASAP. So I'm, I'm glad that they kind of like now are like, oh shit, like no, like she's doing this. Like it, I thought she like was backed off, but no, she's not. Um, It's going to be very interesting because like she said, if you don't like, you know what I mean? If you, they, you're going to get arrested. So I don't, I feel like we're not done with that character yet. And how I feel like she would go farther. So seeing that, I don't know if it's going to be the end of it. But then again, I could see where that would be the end of it. But I feel like this girl is so... We haven't seen the craziest thing that she would do yet. And I feel like we still have yet to see that. If that makes any sense, I feel like that just, I don't know. I feel like we've really seen this character go like really crazy, but we haven't gotten to the point where like it's on carry level. Like I'm going to drive you off the side of the cliff crazy. So I feel like, are we, is that going to be like the stopping point? Which is like, if you don't stop, you're going to get arrested. Simple as that. I feel like we're not done there yet. I feel like there's more to that Miko character. So honestly, it's going to be very interesting to see where we go from there. That's probably the most... I mean, that and, like I said, JJ, I'm glad that we're kind of like, they are now acknowledging that we got to check up on JJ. We haven't seen JJ, I didn't even know it took him long enough. Like, it's been a couple of weeks, clearly, from this week, from this episode, when Jordan and Spencer said it's been a couple of weeks that we haven't been able to get all, all on the same page. So you're telling me it's been a couple of weeks and you haven't checked on, you, you guys didn't talk to JJ after the conversation that JJ had with Asher. That makes me pissed in the show and in the writing. Honestly, because it's bullshit. Um, that Asher never told the told you know the the vortex that what's been going on with JJ. Just it must have slipped Bro's mind, and out of nowhere it's been a couple of weeks, and now they are checking on JJ. It is bullshit. Like let's not even try to like sugarcoat it. It's bullshit. The, the writers, there is no excuse. Like it's bullshit. The way the writers have been writing JJ, it, it's it's terrible. 
Um, I love this show, and I'm gonna call it out. Like it, it's it's bullshit. Like let's be real. Um, especially because it's the last. It's like the it's the episode before the last episode where we're finally doing it. And I feel like I could just see the show. And the thing that will really annoy me the most is that they're just gonna like brush it off. Like they'll sort it out in this one episode. When I feel like this is something that shouldn't have been sorted out in one episode. It should have been the thing like every all these other characters when they have problems. It, it takes a course of a couple of episodes. I don't think it's going to be that case. I feel like this is going to be a one and done, and that will be it. And it's frustrating. It's like, really? You guys have been screwing with this character for how long? And and and, and, not, and none of these characters have been acknowledging that they've been terrible friends. And now finally, it's been a couple of weeks. Or finally, when JJ comes on the point where like he has is, is in breakdown mode, Asher it totally slips his mind to not tell the Vortex for like a couple of weeks. And now they want to check on him. And now it's like, what, they're going to solve, realize now that they've been bad friends, solve it in one go, and then we're just supposed to go to, like, the finale episode, and then, and then that just be it? It's like, no, like, that's bullcrap. Like, this should have been something that, you one, if you guys were going to do a storyline with JJ like this, it should have been something that was, that was played out through the season for how big you've been making it with this character and what he's been going through. Not just an easy go around where it's like, oh, they solved it in one episode. Okay, let's move to the next thing. We have to wrap things up now because we forgot that, you know, we did the storyline with JJ and actually, you know, we forgot where we wanted to go with this. But now, like, we got to wrap it up because, you know, people are calling us out that we don't, we really didn't know what we were doing. You see what I'm saying? So it's one of those things that really frustrates me a little bit. Um, but I'm glad that we're finally getting this episode. Thank the Lord. I hope they actually focus majority on this episode with JJ and not like a, maybe two scenes and then we're focused on other characters. Because that will really make me angry. So, like, I don't know. Um, but I'm glad that we're getting it. At the end of the day, I'm glad that we're, the characters are finally, at least three of our characters are finally realizing, okay, like, we gotta go check up on JJ. Even though the whole entire, like, Vortex group should go want to go check up on JJ. You know what I mean? Not just, like, the three dudes. You know what I mean? Asher, Jordan, and Spencer going to check up on JJ. It should be everybody. Pack in the, pack in the car. We're going to go check on JJ. See what I'm saying? But we're not going to do that. So, I don't know. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see next week's uh, episode 19. It's going to be very interesting. And also, it's going to be super interesting to see where we end this season on episode 20, which, of course, will be the finale episode. I'm hoping I'm hoping that they really, you know, end this season off good. Because, like I said, it was the season, the beginning of the season, like, started out pretty good. And then it's, it slowly started to fall to the CW curse. And then we, we and then it, it, like, got sparked back to life the show with Billy's character being killed off. And they kind of, you know, like pulled a fast one on us you know what i mean um they literally pulled the rug out from underneath our feet you know what i mean like i feel like that was the the breath of fresh air to really kick this show back in the gear i feel like that was their moment of hitting the nos and that really sparked the flame and then we've just been skyrocketing up and the show has been like really like it's gotten our attention we all have been saying that i've been watching people's re reviews and they've been like that's that got us our attention again you know what i mean like that like made us like d like w like locked in until the end of the season you know what i mean so i don't know i am excited for next week's episode because i'm excited to see what they do with J what, what like how they address the whole jj stuff um and yeah guys like i said um if you're new to the channel subscribe to the channel put those notifications like this video i'd love to have you guys here a part of the fam part of the channel we're all about spreading love positivity and motivation and yet again guys we are almost to 700 subscribers i kid you guys not we are so close to 700 subscribers i think right now we're at like 690 almost to 700 subscribers i i think it's like that like we're at like 690 if i'm correct so again if you're new here and you love all american subscribe to the channel put those notifications and like the video because like i said guys i have a couple of ideas going into next season of maybe me trying to like if you guys are interested or not i don't know but i was thinking i could postpone me doing my monday reviews for all american and doing it where like when it goes on the cw app i can record myself watching the full length episode putting it up on patreon but also still doing my review and putting it up on the youtube channel i thought about that i thought that that's the only way only way i can actually do reactions to the show via patreon and like i said it's it's so you know obtainable it's only five dollars a month and right now guys like with me doing the, the countdown to me the fourth with all the star wars movies guys we're at like 70 something videos with all, with all that, with like, I have 70-something 70, 70 videos, uh, some up videos, like, all up on my Patreon. Like, that's how many videos I have up on Patreon. And it's only five bucks a month, and you get access to all that stuff. So, and we're only getting more shows, we're only getting more movies, 
we're doing fun things over there. So like I said, if you guys are interested in actually watch, seeing like me doing reactions to the show, let me know down in the comments below if you guys like the idea of like you know me doing like doing recording on Tuesday my reactions to the show of next season and then putting my review up like the same day up on YouTube. Like let me know. It's just waiting a day for it to go on CW for me to watch it and record it and then put up my reaction on Patreon. Like I said, it's only five bucks, guys. That's a great. That's I, I made. I wanted to make it obtainable for you guys, and I didn't want to make it outrageous like a lot of other YouTube channels do, where they make it like their Patreon super expensive. I did not want to do that. I w went the route of putting the stuff, like putting my reaction stuff, of you know, like uh, you know, on Patreon because I'm able to give you guys that without my stuff being taken down. That's why I am doing it. Like that's why I'm doing Patreon is because I want to give you guys content that I can't give you here because YouTube won't let me. And I don't want to do, like, try to figure out how the fat, like, I can't figure out the, like, I don't want to, like, go, go, like, you know, all, all, go through all that trouble where, like, I'm trying to, like, I'm giving you guys barely any, like, reaction of the episode just to benefit the fact of YouTube only letting a certain amount of, like, you know, uh, you know, copyrighted content in a video so it won't get taken down. Where I could just give you the full length episode with no cuts, no nothing, nothing taken out. And it's a full genuine reaction I'm putting up on Patreon. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of like movie reactions and TV show reactions here on YouTube, a lot of the stuff gets cut out because they don't want their videos being taken down. And a lot of the times they still get taken down and they still get copyright copyright claimed. And a lot of the videos get taken down or blocked. And and they can't give it to you guys anyways. So that's why I'm really happy I'm on Patreon, guys, because I'm, get, I'm able to give you full length reactions, unedited reactions up on patreon for only the price of five bucks that's tv show reviews movie reactions and and, and a whole bunch of more stuff um if you guys are interested they want to go check that out definitely go look at my patreon it's always in the link in description in my link tree and then you go in there and you hit patreon it takes you straight to my patreon so definitely look into subscribing to my patreon right now guys because literally i just posted empire strikes back today for anybody that loves star wars and mind you like I said, we're doing a countdown to May the 4th, so there's a whole bunch of other Star Wars movies up on my, movies and shows up on my Patreon, whether it be Andor, whether it be Bad Batch Season 1, Bad Batch Season 2, whether it be Mando Season 3, um, whether it be all the Star Wars movies, you know what I mean? I did the prequels first and all the other, you know, Solo, Rogue One, and then I did, of course, you know, I, did, I just got done, like, with New Hope the other day, and I did Empire Strikes Back today. I'm actually, after I'm done doing this video, I'm going to go record my Return of the Jedi reaction, and that will be up tomorrow. And also tomorrow, I'm actually doing a countdown to, uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 this Thursday. So my reaction to Guardians of the Galaxy 1 will be up tomorrow as well, along with my reaction to Volume 2 on Wednesday before Thursday's release of Volume 3. And guys, like I said, June, I think, yeah, June 21st is when Secret Invasion comes out on Disney+. Plus. I will be reacting to that. Guys, I want to, like I said, I, I'm giving, I want to, I, I put up this content on Patreon because at the end of the day, I'm doing this for you guys. I love doing, I love making videos for you guys. But like, it's one of those things where like, if I could put it up on the channel, full length reaction, I would, but YouTube just won't let me. And you guys have asked before, you know what I mean, about like, oh, like do reactions and stuff like that, like to shows and stuff and movies and stuff. I wish I could if YouTube wasn't being weird. That's why I love Patreon and you know what I mean? And that's why this was such a great, great route for me to do it is because I could still give you reviews here, but the reactions and stuff that would get blocked and copyright claimed and some people's get channels get taken down when you put up, you know, when you get so many claims to a point. I'm able to give you guys that full and un full unedited reactions up on my Patreon. So like I said, if you guys definitely go subscribe to my Patreon if you guys are interested. And also if you guys are interested in the idea of me doing reactions to to season six of All American, of also putting up my review, let me know because like I said, like I will I, I will totally be down to do that because I love the idea of me doing reactions to the show, but it, they'll just be up on Tuesday on my Patreon, and like I said, it's it's so accessible, it's only $5 a month, it's such, it's such a great thing for all that content, it's a great deal in my personal opinion, I wish a lot of other people would do that, but a lot of other people don't, um, and like I said, I wanted to make it obtainable for you guys, because I love you guys, that's why I did it, I, I love doing this, so, and you know what I mean, it's, you know what I mean, that's, it's, it's the best when I get to make these videos for you guys, I'm so glad I'm able to do it via Patreon, where I'm not getting, I don't have to risk my channel being taken down, you know what I mean? And risk having to cut out, like, at that point, like, why do it if I'm cutting out half the episode or a movie? It just, it makes no sense to me when you can just upload the full thing 
to you know, to Patreon. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just, it's great in my personal opinion. I'm in full. I, I love Patreon and what and me putting content over there. Um, but guys, like I said, that was the video. Um, I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and I'll see you guys next Monday for episode 19 of All American Season Five. Peace.